<laughs> and say my my topic is praying in the spirit. We need to have a habit of praying, don't we? Amen. You know, we've, we've been talking this weekend about different habits that we need to have as Christians. They're setting spiritual goals, controlling your thoughts, the boys of the world, student of the word, proper attitude, praying in the spirit. We're going to have a couple more this afternoon. But what, what is one of the most important things a Christian can do? Pray, Pray right? Yeah. What is prayer? Talking to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Going to the one who can take care of any problem that we have. Amen. 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 I mean, you know what happens when I try to fix a problem? Yeah. It gets a whole lot worse. Amen. <laughs> But if we take it to the Lord in prayer, what happens? Things all taken care of. Amen. You know, we have heartaches come in our lives. We have sicknesses. We have death. We have just a multitude of things that happens. Where do we get that comfort? From the Lord, Lord. Jesus Christ. When we pray to the Lord, we get comfort. I think the good Lord above that I can have that peace and comfort in whatever's going on in my life. Amen. You know, the thing's not perfect for me right now. Things happen. But I know that my Lord and Savior is going to take care of it. Amen. 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 Right. No matter what it is. Right. Amen. We've got a sister in Christ right now just knocking on heaven's door. Talk hospice said. Mm. Dear lady, we know there's any anyone that's ever been so close to the heaven doors, sister south. Yeah. You talk about faith. And a lady talks about Jesus Christ, her Savior. Tell you what, she loves her Lord. We got a comfort Amen. knowing that. I tell you what, these people that die without knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, I tell you what, I, I feel sorry for their families. Amen. Amen. I feel sorry for their families. Because how can you have that peace? I thank God my kids are saved. I thank God that I got to baptize my grandson two weeks ago. <laughs> he come to me one day. He said, Pat. Said, I want to be saved. Praise the Lord. Said, I want to be baptized. That's what he asked me. He said, I want to be baptized, Pat. I said, Well, there's a couple things you gotta do. There's something you gotta do first. It's that you gotta accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And we proceeded to talk to him. Tell him about what the Lord Jesus Christ done. I said, Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? He said, Yes, I do. Well, mind you, he just turned six years old day after tomorrow. But there's some people's going to question, and I've never been questioned. Does he understand what he's doing? Yes, he does. The Bible tells me not to push your kids away. That's right. That's not the exact words. I, I'm not going to exactly. We're not to hinder these kids from coming to Christ. That's right. We gotta be careful. It scares me to death that to be some kid come forward and they say, Oh no, you can't be saved. It scares me. 
Now I understand there is a time of nature accountability. But when they know, yeah. when they come to you and ask you, that's right. It's not like you got to be saved today. Right. That's right. That's a whole different ball game. Now I feel sorry for the one that's been drug forward and made mm -hmm. yes. a false profession. But I thank God. And we pray for these kids all the time that they come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. You know? I'll just let you know that there's a little off. That wasn't even part of my sermon, but the Lord laid it on me. I'll tell you that. We need to we need to be praying about things like this. We need Amen. to be praying. Amen. Have that proper attitude. Yeah. <coughs> I'll read my scripture that I was giving you. Jude chapter verse 20. It <coughs> said, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Have you ever been in prayer and got so worked up in the prayer that you're praying that you have tears coming down your eyes? Yeah. I tell you, I've, I've been praying before. I'm praying for somebody, I'm praying about something. And you get to praying about it. And you get to thinking, you know what? My Lord can take care of that. That's right. My Lord will fix that. And, and it just brings tears to your eyes thinking, what a powerful God I serve. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ain't it wonderful that you can just get that, just know that power that the Lord has. That's right. You know, just... It, it just makes you just at awe to God. Praying in the Holy Ghost. The first thing we need, need to understand is who is the Holy Ghost? Right? If we're going to pray in him, we need to know who it is. Let's go back over to John chapter 14. You have your Bible, I didn't, I'd like for you to just follow with me in, in Scripture. Sometimes I don't speak up well. I, I say things not exactly the way the Lord say it in the Bible, and I like where you just follow along and you know exactly what I'm saying. John 14, 15 through 18, it says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I pray, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Amen. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but he know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be with you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, what happens? The Holy Spirit comes and lives within your heart, right? Amen. Praise the Lord for that. That's right. Praise the Lord for that, I tell you. You know what He does for me? He tells me when I'm doing wrong. That's right. When I, when I start to veer off a little bit, you got that Holy Spirit saying, Hey, boy. Yeah. Boy, get back over here, boy. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? That's what the Holy Spirit does for me. There's another thing that the Holy Spirit does for me. Go over to Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, verse 
a little confessing little thing right here. Here a few months ago, I, I was trying to fix, I was working on a sermon, and I was trying to find these verses right here. And you know what? I could not find them. I searched, I could not find them to save my soul. You know, this time, when I was working on this here, the Lord gave it to me just right now. It's right there. Amen. Amen. Evidently, he didn't need, I didn't need it in the other sermon. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groaning which could not be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. How many times have we we've been in prayer and just just seem like your mind goes blank and you just don't know what to say. You don't know where to go. You don't understand what you need to pray for. <coughs> we got the Holy Spirit saying, I know the deepness of your heart. I know what you need to pray for. I'll take care of this. I'll send it to the Father. He'll take care of it. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Praise the Lord that He, he takes care of my inner thoughts that I don't even understand sometimes. Infirmity there is our sins. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. <coughs> we go to sin and He gets us back on track. Amen? He guides us back to where we need to be. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. I like down there at the end of verse 27. And if you want to do it, you can do it too. I underline according to the will of God. Amen. According to the will of God. Amen. You know what that takes out? Sure. My wants. Yeah, right. It takes me out of it. It's God's, what He, the will of God. That's what we need to be praying for. The will of God. Mm -hmm. And whatever is going on in our lives. Exactly. I got it here to do it here in just a little bit again, but I'm going to do it again right here. James 4 and 3 says, You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it up on your, lust, your lust. We put me first instead of God first. Our prayers are not going to be heard. They're not going to be accepted. They're not going to be... The answer's not going to be yes. Okay? The answer's going to be no. I've heard a lot of people say, well, I've prayed for this and I've prayed for this and it's never happened. Well, maybe you're praying wrong. Right. That's right. Maybe you're praying with the wrong attitude. Mm -hmm. You're praying for what I want right. instead of the will of God. Yeah. And I'll tell you, if you pray the will of God, it'll be a whole lot better than the... the I want. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, I know what happens when I want. Mm -hmm. I get what I want. It don't work out very well. A lot of times I end up in trouble trying to do that. We love the Lord and ask for His will. <coughs> now I had a girl one time, a lady. She told me one time said her her dad had passed away. He had cancer, and they prayed for him, prayed for him, prayed for him. A wonderful man, a real wonderful Christian man. And the girl come to me, the daughter come to me later. Said, "You know why Daddy passed away? It's because people prayed wrong." No, no, that's not why. It was God's will. Yeah, you know. Some people get the idea that we should live forever. <laughs> this book tells me that we're all going to die. Right. Amen? Yeah. We're all going to die. Sister Sally loved the lady. Loved to see her live for another hundred years. I tell you what, I, just, I love being real Sister Sally. But you know what? She's got to die. The Bible says we're all going to die. Amen. And the reason we're all going to die is because of the wages of sin. Amen. Sin. You know that? That word, three-letter word? 
that's got this country in a mess, sin. <laughs> we gotta pray the will of God. When when these things come up to the time of the end of their life, we shouldn't have prayed for them to keep living. You know what? They're they're looking forward to going and being at the pearly gates and being at the feet of Jesus. Oh, how we earn to be at the feet of Jesus, amen? Yeah, I like to live being a hundred. If the Lord calls me today, hey, I'm ready to go, amen? Amen. Yeah. What a glorious that'll be, you know? No more crying, no more sorrow, no more heartaches. Mm -hmm. Wow. We need to be prayer in prayer according to God's will. Pray for God's will. When's another time we need to be in prayer? Go to Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to battle. Let's see. Get there before I do. Just hold on a minute. I'll catch you up here in a minute. Ephesians 6, 18 through 20. If you go back up and read down through, we're talking about putting on the whole armor of God here. Okay, you put on the... you you got the whole armor on. What's one thing you need after that? You need prayer, don't you? Look at verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for the saints. And for me that utters may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. A supplication means to feed humbly. And perseverance is continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failure, or opposition. Okay, preachers all look up here. Who of us has not come up against difficulties, failure, or opposition? We all get it, don't we? Yeah. All Christians get it, don't we? We need to be in prayer that the Lord will keep us strong in them times. We just had an instance come up here just not too long ago at a, another church that there was a preacher bringing in heresy into the church. They are preaching all kinds of garbage. I talked to a wild old preacher and he went with me. He said, I'll tell you what, he said, you go in the Spirit of God and the devil will flee. Amen. You know what happened? We went there and the devil fled. We got to going down, we was going through the service, we, we'd opened up a business meeting, we was, we was going through some business meeting. We're going to appoint a pastor. And he got up and started off. And I don't believe in this organization stuff, and I believe in all this, on and on. But for one thing, we have to have some organization, though. Amen. It's just like this meeting. We have to have some organization. We've got to keep things in a timely manner, we've got to keep things rolling smoothly. That's right. And he got up and he left. And maybe some other left with him. And it was like a whole new, uh, the place just felt so different. The peace just come up on the church. Yeah. Brother Aaron preached there after that and before that. And he has said that 
before it didn't feel, and after it, they had a whole different feeling. Mm -hmm. You get the devil out, let the Lord in, things are a whole lot better. Amen. You hit the devil straight on. Look back at verse 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The other thing that we, we battle daily. <laughs> Talk about spiritual wickedness in high places. I don't like bringing up politics, but you look what's going on in our government. Right. I mean, they they believe that it's fine for homosexuals to get married and live together. They believe it's fine for perverts to walk into women's bathrooms. They believe it's fine to kill babies. Right. They call it abortion. I call it murder. You know? But we've got to be prepared for battle. You do that in prayer. Amen. When you go against the devil, you better have the Lord with you. Amen. You know how the Lord defeated Satan in the in the desert? With the Word of God. With the Amen. Word. You know how we defeat Satan? With the Word. Amen. Preacher Westfall brought a good message yesterday on that, studying the Word so that you know what the Word is. Well, let's go over to James chapter 5. Thirteen through fifteen. <clears throat> Prayers for others. Actually, I'm going down through eighteen on this. James five thirteen through eighteen. So then, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. Now I'm just going to say right here and stuff. This here's something I don't see very often anymore. Why come we don't pray? Why come we don't ask the elders of the church to come and pray over us when we're sick? I tell you, the best physician that ever walked is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall rise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. The one thing about calling the elders to pray over you, one thing, you better hope the elders have the faith that they should have. Right. And you know what? You've got to have the faith too. The sick person is going to have the faith too. We, we read in the Scripture about the the man that was sick and palsy and uh, his uh, his neighbors, friends, packed him up, carried him to where Jesus was. Boy, it was so crowded in the house they couldn't even get in through the door. You know what kind of faith they had? They carried him up on top of the roof, <coughs> tore the roof off, and dropped him down but not only did it take the faith of these four friends or however many friends he had, but it took faith of him too. Amen. He had to have faith that if I don't have faith that something's going to happen, and you and Brother Josh comes up to me and says, "Come on, we're going to go, we're going to go get you fixed." If I don't have faith, it's not going to help none. Right. I don't care what kind of faith Brother Josh has. I got to have that faith also. Mm -hmm. I need the faith of Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ that He can. 
heal. And you know what? He can. Amen. He can heal the sick. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall rise him up. And if he hath committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Now, I read that and, and, and looked over that. But just because he got healed from being sick, is that why he was, his sin was forgiven? No, it was because he had faith in Jesus Christ, wasn't it? That's why his sins were forgiven. Brother Aaron, he, he talked about the woman that had the issue of blood for 12 years. <laughs> I've preached on her before and said, I'll tell you what, that's a, a beautiful passage of faith. Here's a woman that has went to the doctors, spent everything she had trying to get better. To know them. She got to talk thinking to herself one day. She said, Boy, if I could just get to Jesus Christ, if I could just get just touch a him of her just dress. She knew she didn't even have to speak to him. Yep. Just reach out for that faith. Reach through that faith. And then just as soon as she touched that him. She was healed, right? You know? Right. Amen. Man, what, what power our Lord has. Verse 16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, <coughs> fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We hear that part of the verse quite often, don't we? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, <laughs> you get a good righteous man praying for you, and you have the faith that it'll work, great things are going to happen. Amen. Amen. And here it talks about a man that had that kind of prayer life. Elias was a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Up until we got this rain here a couple of days, I'm going to give the preachers a hard time about it. All right, who prayed that we'd have no rain? But we've been in a drought. Amen. We're still on the ground. We've got a little bit of rain, but we're still on the ground. Amen. Yeah. But you know, a factual, permanent prayer of a righteous man. I, I was talking to a boy the other day. I went and bought a few belts of hay off of him for someone else. And I was talking to him, a good Christian man. I grew up with him and neighbor. And, uh, we was talking, they said, uh, I told the people back there in the spring, we getting a lot of rain and it, it was muddy. My, my driveway, my yard, it was a muddy mess. And I actually talked to him, I got a, a couple of round bells off of him just to throw over top of the mud so I could walk to the house without them having mud up to my knees. <laughs> and they said, he told them, he said, you better watch about praying for no rain. Well, think about that. We ended up in a drought this this fall. Right. That's one thing we got to be careful for. We need to be careful what we pray for because we might just get it. Amen. All right? <laughs> we just might get it. Verse 18, And they prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Now, we went just a couple months or without rain. Could you imagine three and a half years without rain? Could you just imagine? I mean, our creeks have dried up. People hauling water. Yep. Well, I sat here yesterday in church, and, and there'd be a truck drive by. 
and he had one of them big old totes. You know what he was doing? He was hauling water. Amen. I seen him go down the road, and I seen him go back. And as I was living here yesterday afternoon, I met him coming again. They've been people that's hauled a lot of water this last few months to their cattle, to their horses, and livestock, whatever they got. We need to be careful what we pray for also. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm going to hit on next. Go to 1 John chapter 5. I'm just about out of time, man. Yeah. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> First John chapter 5, 13 through 15. These things I have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that we may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He will hear us. He heareth us. And if we know that He hears us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have a petition that we desire of Him. Here it is again, according to His will. You know, according to His will. We need to be careful what we ask for. Now I told you there a little bit ago, and James 4 and 3 says, You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it up on your lusts. You know, a lot of times we ask for things that we shouldn't be asking for. Or we ask for things that we think we want right then and after we get it, we don't want it no more. You know? <laughs> How many times does that happen? We end up getting a, all right, if you you keep up on it, you, you just, you really want it? I'll just give it to you. And when you get it, you're like, oh man, I wish I hadn't got this. It happens. I'm going to finish up. First Thessalonians five seventeen says, "Pray without ceasing." So how, how often should we be in prayer? We should always be ready for prayer, shouldn't we? I've used this here a lot of times. That praying without ceasing don't mean you get around 24 hours a day. Oh, Lord, pray, Lord, I pray, 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 pray. It means when someone asks you something, Amen. ask for mm -hmm. your prayer and something, be ready to give that prayer then. Mm -hmm. You know what happens if I wait for 10 minutes mm -hmm. yep. to do that prayer? Right. I've done for God. We need to be ready to pray whenever someone asks them in our center prayers. Amen. I've said this here before, I have truck drivers come in all the time and they'll ask, they'll tell you something going on in their life. Something, their wife's sick, they're, they're having health issues, they're having hip replacement, they're having knee replacement, they're, you know, just kidney problems, whatever, different things. But you know what we need to do just as soon as they say something like that? You get to pray about it. Pray the Lord about it. Pray without ceasing. And that's what happens when you have it as a habit to pray. Yeah. And you make it a habit. What's the first thing we should do in the morning? Pray. Pray. What's the last thing we should do when we go to bed? Pray. Pray. Mm -hmm. Do we do it all the time? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But we should. What should we do when we sit down and eat? Right. Should pray about it. And any time in between. Amen. Old David, he prayed three times a day, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I mean, David, he prayed. Yeah, I'll just say it like this three times a day is a good place to start. Yeah. That's a good place to start. Amen. Mm hmm. All right, we're going to finish up here. 
you know, as we're finishing up, you know, prayer should be the center of each and everything that we do. Something comes up in your life that needs to be care of, what should we do about it? We should pray about it. Take it to the Lord. Don't cry like Nathaniel does. Don't cry do it on your own. Take it to the Lord. Thank you for your time and attention on that. And, uh,